if it looks like I'm in a jail cell, I'm not. But the fact that there's no internet here kind of makes it feel like a jail cell. If you hear this noise in the background, that's a fan going off because it's super hot in my room. I have the door closed so I don't make a lot of noise because this is not my room, obviously. I am actually on the island of Oahu going to college for my second year. Dear Lord, I feel so old. Anyway, on with the video. Hello guys, sorry I'm so late, but it's been quite an adventure in the past couple days of Asia Land, but that's not the point of this video. Anyway, let's get to it. Last week's episode of Legend of Korra, The String, was just, um, heart-wrenching, to say the least. I don't even know where to begin, because honestly, there's just so much that happened last episode, and I don't even know where to start. So, um, Let's just uh, start with the usual this week's thing that happens here on this channel. This week's jerk of the week goes to, surprise, surprise, not Unalak this time. Oh my goodness, two weeks in a row he has not gotten jerk of the week. I wonder who could that be? I'm just gonna go and say Varric, because he's the obvious villain right now in this episode. He is the villain. Honestly, I really like Varric because, yes, we kind of had a little hinting that he was a villain, but you still never saw it because he was so jokesy and clownsy and made us laugh and he was funny. He wanted to help the crew out however he could. And then we just find out that he is the villain behind all that's happening in Republic City and the Southern Water Tribe. Well, half of it. One half is Unalak, the other half is him. Despite you being a jerk of the week, I just gotta clap this out for you, Varric, because you are a very formidable villain. I think you're a lot more dangerous than Amon. I mean, yes, Amon was physically dangerous. I mean, he could take away people's bending. But you are dangerous in a way that you can control things. You are very, very sneaky without being in the shade and in the dark and you know, sneaky, sneaky. You just love your money. This week's You Tried star goes to Mako. I'm not being sarcastic about it this time, guys. I'm actually being kind of serious on this. Oh my. He's been trying really hard, especially with a lot of the criminal activity, such as the explosion of the building during the Southern Water Tribe demonstration in Republic City, as well as demasking the criminal who has been taking Asami's products from Future Industries. Speaking of Future Industries, let's discuss Asami. I'm really glad that she's come back as a bigger character than she was in the first book. Instead of being Korra's rival to a love interest, she's actually being a character her own character she has her own plot she's not in the way of somebody else and you know <laughs> we really can't not discuss the big elephant coin that's in the room when we discuss Mako and Asami together so uh, let's just beat this one out how about the Masami kiss yes that kiss. So before you guys start jumping off the boat and beating Asami with a stick or screaming from the sidelines that your ship got back together, let's just take a breather and examine what happened. Basically, Future Industries is all that she has. Her father is in jail. Her mother is dead. I'm sorry. She's basically alone. And Mako and Belin and Korra are basically the only family that she has. When I thought about this, there are three possible understandings for the Masami kiss. The first one, a lot of mixed feelings. With constantly being around him and all this emotion flying around, she probably still has a lot of mixed feelings about being friends with him. Reason number two, he is the only one helping her in this situation. Granted, Korra was attacked by a spirit, and Bolin is busy shooting a propaganda movie. So basically, he is the only one that's taking his time to help her find out what is going on with her company. He wants what's best for her. And as I said again, she is practically alone. And reason number three, it's probably still a shock and just came out of nowhere. People act on instincts. She probably acted on an instinct. She was just probably so elated that he's helping her that she just... But all in all, I'm really glad we got to see some Masami friendship. And honestly, they work great together. Not as boyfriend and girlfriend, as a couple, but as friends, as team fighters, as do-gooders, as total badassery kick-butt kind of thing. So I'm going to assume we'll be seeing Bolin in this outfit basically for the whole book, or at least until they leave Republic City. But please, can it be the whole book? Please. Speaking from an actor's point of view, yes, actors do become their character that they play on set or on stage or wherever they're filming or acting. But there is a time and place where an actor does know when to come out of their character and just be who they are. And I think also Bolin is getting confused between Ginger who likes Nuktuk and Ginger who likes Bolin. They're two different Gingers, they're not the same. I think he's having a hard time realizing that. Poor guy. He's just not very lucky with the ladies, is he? Tear. And our final character that we 
get to talk about is Cora. I, I don't even know what to say. I was confused that we didn't get to see her story arc throughout this episode. Break, I must admit this, you, you had me fooled. Good for you, I had no idea what was gonna happen. See, I thought, when Korra was eaten by the spirit world, we're just, she was just gonna go to the spirit world and meet one. But to be washed ashore on the Fire Nation with her memory just completely gone, that's just... But I have to say, it was really interesting to see her use airbending. You know, when, when she woke up and guarded herself, she used airbending, not her usual firebending or waterbending. I'm just saying that was an interesting choice for the animators and Bright to make. I think her using her airbending shows us her new character, or shows us her innocence of the world around her. Because air is innocent, it's childlike, it's free-flowing, it's free, it's flying, it's air. This is gonna be an interesting turn of events. I feel like book two is taking us for a new adventure, and it's gonna be better than ever, and this could be a better book than book one. Anyway guys, you have a great week. I will see you with this coming week's episode of Legend of Korra, episode seven. Oh my gosh, we're more than halfway through. Okay. Anyway, that's a wake-up call. Alright guys, bye!